Hello, everybody, and welcome to the beginning of Rank 2! So, you've fought with a lot of biplanes, you've gotten team killed and rammed out of the sky, and with maps so small, you can throw a rock from one side to the other. Now we're upgrading to Tier 2. Now what does Tier 2 in War Thunder have from Tier 1? Well, you're gonna start seeing a lot more... I guess you could say the start of the pinnacle lines in the game. And what I mean is like, you know, since I'm gonna be starting with Germany here, you get the start of BF-109s. You get the start of Falkwolf 190s. You get, you know, upgraded versions of the JU 87s, you know, and, and how far they go. And really, you just. You kind of say goodbye to a lot of the fun that biplane matches give you. Like these guys here. And you. You start tangling with the big boys here. So, the first plane I'm going to start off with is the BF-109 B1 Late. Now, I've kind of covered this plane already in my German tank... German tank... German Tier 1, because this plane is just a slightly upgraded version of this guy here the uh, giveaway premium for the Germans. And really, that's kind of it. It's same battle ranking, so you still can fill up a lineup in arcade with this. If you still want to use biplanes and whatnot, now you have a plane that has some decent speed out of it. You want to mostly just be doing boom and zoom in this. But, like I said, I kind of already covered this plane. So, I'm going to move on to some of the more unique stuff. Like this thing. The HE-100D1. Now, the HE-100 started off as a racing plane. And, I think in like the 1930s, broke the speed record. And... Yeah, it shows there's tier two planes that wish there, there's tier three planes that wish they could touch this. This thing at a 1.7 battle ranking, this thing is a bullet. This, if you imply boom and zoom tactics in this plane and at 1.7, you will be fared up against biplanes a lot. At 1.7, nothing will touch you. I've had matches 8, 9, 10 kills in this thing, in arcade, and just not a scratch on my plane because nobody... I'll see bullets fly underneath me because they can't, they, they can't keep up. <sighs> this plane just has me baffled. I guess the only reason why is that 1.7 is because it only has three of the MG-17s. You get one that fires through the engine here in the middle, and then one in each wing. But, 18.6 second turn time at... I, don't turn in this thing. You're, you're one of the fastest things alive in this, in this game. Just... Just boom and zoom in this thing. Moving on to armor. You do have a piece of armor plating here to protect you from the back. But it's only 10 millimeters thick. Uh, depending on what belts some people have, they'll go right through that. The biggest weakness to this plane is the internals. Your wings are basically just made of fuel tanks. There's an oil cooling system back here, which will heat up your engine and burn it out. Fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel tank. Look at the cooling system. Basically, 
in real life, this plane went so fast that the engine would burn itself out before you even got to the speeds you wanted to do. So they basically just threw any sort of thing they can throw into the wings to cool off the engine, they did. And that's this plane's biggest downfall. But at this speed, don't... Don't get... You're not going to get shot at. You're just too fast. And I love it. <laughs> uh, like I said before, three seven point or 7.92 machine guns. So, they fire pretty quick. You, you will do work in this plane. A lot of work. It's scary. So... Then we move on to the DO-17Js. Now you get a J-1 and a J-2 here, so I'm going to kind of just lump them together since they're basically the same plane. And they are heavy fighter versions of the DO-17 bombers. They are slow like bombers. They turn like bombers. But, um, yeah, do you see those guns in front of there? There's four 20 millimeter cannons right here, four MGFFM cannons. There's four 792 machine guns. If anything comes across to you, they're dead. Anything goes head on with you, they're dead. But unfortunately, you do get killed a lot in this thing because you're a bomber with guns. And unfortunately, there's just nothing really said about it. Um, moving on to the internals here. You get bits and pieces of armor plating here. Uh, you get this guy here, this guy here, and most of your armor plating is going to be in this little pod here, this little cockpit that sticks out. That's just, that's just because that's where everybody's in. You do get some defensive gunners. You get a guy with a 7.92 turret here. Or actually, that's a 13 millimeter machine gun. I apologize. So, that's basically a German 50 cal back there. At 3.0 battle ranking, though, it's not going to do all that much by itself, but it's there. You also got another guy down here with the same thing, but uh, I just don't really care much for these things because they're basically just bombers with massive amounts of guns on them and sadly enough I feel like they don't get to use them all that much because they see DO-17 and they're like oh look free kill and yeah the wings kind of give that away as well I if you want to play German heavy fighters it does get better there's something called the ME-410s. But I would stick with the BF-110. Just stick with the BF-110 if you want to fly German heavy fighters. Until you get down here. But that's rank 3, so we'll talk about them later. And with the J-2, it's... The only real difference is it gets little radar thingies here. So, unfortunately... Uh, in terms of planes in War Thunder, there's no use for radar. It's, it's there. Then we move on to probably the one, some of the best uh, GU-87s in the game. The D3. Here I have fully upgraded because it's basically a combination of the other GU-87s where one gets a lot of small bombs and the other gets the really, really big bomb. Yeah, basically with this, with the bomb loadout here, you got a lot to pick from. <laughs> this thing's great at ground attack. You get two 250s and then a thousand down here. So that's really nice. You also get that weird MG81 turret back here that is like the double barreled. So you technically have two guns back there, but like I said before, with the other GU-87s, um, you kind of need to be careful where you fly just because you are a very slow, very unmaneuverable target. Um, one thing that is 
very apparent is the sheer amount of armor these things get. There's a lot of bulletproof glass. There's a lot of steel. There's just a lot of places, you know, to defend your gunner, pilot, you know, bottom of the engine, fuselage. There's a little bit here to protect your pilot. You know, these things are fairly hard to kill the pilots with, but just, just shoot him in the wings. He's got fuel tanks for days. Just shoot him in the wings. Like most ground attackers, they're going to have all their fuel tanks in the wings because for one reason or another, you know, they're there. But if it, don't get me wrong, though. This actually is a very nice um, bomber here. I've actually flown it out a little bit that I've actually unlocked that skin for it. So, you know, it's a fun little plane. You still get the two uh, 7.92 machine guns there, but, you know, it's basically a combination of the two rank 1 Stukas. Then, I'm gonna skip these guys here, because these are Italian planes that I have researched before they got moved over to the, uh, Italians, so I will get to these in a separate video. Then we get to what I would say is kind of like the beef of the uh, tier 2 Germans. You start getting some really nice BF-109s. You start off here with the E-1, which is a faster, I would say more powerful armament than the B-1, because you start off with four MG-17s. You get one there, two in the nose, and then one in the other wing. At battle ranking 1.7, by the way, so basically play this thing the same way you would the HE-100. You're not going to be as fast as the HE-100, because that thing's just built for speed, but the bf 109s uh, through and through are energy fighters. They, they love boom and zooming, they love uh, performing energy maneuvers, they like stalling out other planes. This is just, this is just a plane that you'll grow to love. At least I have. The series of BF-109s. I've never flown a BF-109 in this game that I didn't like. Uh, unfortunately, no armor plating, and on the internals, everything's just sort of cramped together, so it is a fairly durable aircraft. But this one, I would say, is the introductory model, because the second one here, the E-3 and the E-4, and the third one, the E-4, you actually have really, really, really nice armament. The E3 replaces two of your MG-17s with 20mm cannons. Like I said before, boom and zoom tactics, except now it's going to be a lot more fun taking down targets. You don't have to spew them for, bu for bullets for as long as, you know, it takes. So... You get a, the Battle of Britain camouflage there with the big yellow nose. Um, I mostly just threw on this just because it's it's different. I like it because it's different. Uh, you are okay maneuverable, but like I said, bf 109s are an energy fighter. You really want to spend your time uh, climbing up. The bf 109s have a very, very nice climb rate. So you will have no problem getting to altitude. Your big thing is is you want to dive on people, you want to open up with the guns as soon as you can, because you only get 60 rounds per 20mm cannon. So that is probably the biggest downside to the E3 and the E4. The E4 is just sort of an upgraded version when I get to that. Again, no armor plating whatsoever. It's still an early BF-109, and same internals. It's basically the same plane, just as the E-1. It's just got cannons now, and it moves up a battle ranking from 1.7 to 2.7. But I feel like 2.7 is very comfortable for this plane. And then with the E-4, kind of the same thing. It moves up battle ranking a little bit, just because it does have a, a more powerful engine. Uh, it also gets a piece of armor plating here. It's like the first BF-109 to get armor plating. Again, only 10 millimeters thick, so depending on what belts people have, they'll be able to pierce right through there. 
exact same thing on the internals, but uh, like I said before, it's basically the exact same plane. It's a little bit more powerful, um, so I guess that warrants the battle ranking increase. It's only one battle ranking increase up so from 2.7 to 3.0, so if you want, you could throw them in a lineup together. I don't think the E3 and the E4 really have that much um, difference. Uh, same armament, two 7.92 machine guns, and then two 20mm cannons with the same ammo loadout. So basically, have fun with these. You want to climb, climb, and you want to boom and zoom. If you do that, and you don't, and you avoid turn fights, you'll you'll do great. So then, moving on to a brand new type of plane for the Germans, the Falkwolf 190s. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. But FW-190. This one's the A-1 variant. These are basically... I'm going to tell you what the nickname for these. These are called Butcher Birds. It's because they, they like to destroy planes. You know, basically they're the same as the BF-109s. But these things have guns for days. Even, I mean... Look at that battle ranking, 3.7. You're facing some really mean things at battle ranking 3.7. The, the game basically tells you, hey, if you want to fly this thing, even the introductory model, the A1, these things are nasty. These things are nasty things to fly. These things do not like other planes. They will decimate them, even with... What I would say here is the weakest of armament. First off, you start off with four of the MG-17s. One here, two in the nose, and then one here. You also get two 20mm cannons. So basically, it's a combination of all of the BF-109s <laughs> that I just showed you. Yeah, it's also fast. It's also very fast. It's one of the few things at rank 2 that can keep up with a, the AG-100. It also climbs really, really well. The, the, this thing... This thing's a completely different breed of plane entirely. I love the Falkwolf 190s in this game. It is just nasty. You also get some pretty decent armor plating here. You get this uh, steel around the cowling here, which is actually going to protect your engine. You get two layers of it. Big ol' radial. But, you know, you actually have some decent protection here. You also have a big, thick piece of armor glass here to protect you from head-ons. And some armor plating back here. Again, that 12mm is going to block a lot more than the 8mm, but you still have armor. And with everything relatively close into one another, these Falkwolves are actually pretty darn tanky as well. So, if you see one of these things flying around, watch out, because he is fast. He also has something up his sleeve that a lot of other planes really don't have that much. And that's their roll rate. I know I don't talk about the roll rates all that much of some of these planes, but... You know, it, it, I mean, just look at... These are just the machine guns. Just the machine guns. And then these are with the cannons, so... All of this coming out at once. And yeah, not to mention, it... it with the roll rate, it's not super maneuverable. You can out-turn them if you are a dedicated turn fighter. But have fun dodging this. Yeah. You'll have pilots that do stuff like this. And it's just like, well, have fun hitting me. You know, good luck trying to actually, you know, do anything with that. Like I said, not great turn fighters themselves, but... Just, you know... I've already sung this plane's praises enough. Just holy crap. Ah, uh, Falkwolf 190A1. It warrants that battle ranking of 3.7. 
So be very careful what you throw that in. Rank 2, 3.7. There's battle ranking 3 planes that don't even have a 3.7 battle ranking. Well, it is what it is, though. The JU-87D5, however, changes things up from the JU-87s. So, you know, you, you get bombs. Unfortunately, not that great of bombs. Your top loadout here in terms of bombs is a 500 and then two 250s, so... You know, that, that, that kind of stinks, you know, like, I, where's my 1,000 kilogram bomb? Well, it's because this plane changes things up. It likes to have guns. I'm just going to say this now. Never head on a JU-87 D5. I don't care what loadout he has. Never go head on with the JU-87 D5. Because this one here grants you 12 machine guns. Six in each gun pod. Plus, his own guns, if he even has bombs, if he just rocks the bombs, he has two 20mm cannons. Two MG151s. So, he already is packing heat. Still gets the same weird double-barreled machine gun back here, but that's not all he gets. He can just replace the machine guns and just get an additional four cannons. If there ever was a ground attacker, that's probably a really good bomber hunter. Because this thing gets a bomber spawn point. If you're a bomber pilot, watch out for these guys. Because they're already at your altitude. Granted, he's kind of slow. It doesn't turn that well, but he doesn't need to get his guns on you for very long. Now, granted, these are sort of built for ground attacking, especially lightly armored targets, but just, just don't head on this guy. He also gets all the exact same armor plating as before. Yeah, well, he does have the disadvantage of still having these big fuel wings here, but basically this is a JU-87 that the Germans just decided, you know what, we've had enough of the bombs. Let's just throw guns on there. And... You'd be surprised how many kills you can rack up in this thing. A lot of people underestimate the GU-87 D5. And... You know, you're a slow target, which means you can... Yeah, you can't outturn anybody, but... You'd be surprised how many things you can make dodge you. Or how many things you can dodge. Just because you are that slow. People underestimate you. This is a nasty, nasty plane. Also at battle ranking 3.7. <laughs> so it complements your FW-190. <laughs> oh my gosh, it, it, that thing's a butcher bird. This thing's just a... Just a butcher. <laughs> Alright, so then moving on to the actual first bomber you get, because these guys here, I don't even know if they're in the game for the Germans, but... The AG-111H6. Now the H6 has a few nice things going for it. First off, its top bomb loadout, you get a you get 2,000 kilogram bombs and a 250. So basically, you're double the size of the Stuka at tier at tier one. You also are pretty quick for a bomber. Pretty pretty quick. Uh, your defensive armament is mostly the 7.9 machine gun or 7.92 machine guns again. This guy here does rotate 360 degrees in this little turret here. Unfortunately, though, he can't really shoot forward all that much just because he has this little glass uh, canopy here to protect himself. But uh, the other big thing with this is 
you can carry two torpedoes. So if you're on a map like Norway, for instance, where there's a lot of ships, you can you can kind of go with the anti-shipping rule. The HE-111H6, it, it, it's, it's a nice little bomber. I've actually flown this thing out a little bit. I don't have it spaded or anything or fully upgraded, but I actually quite like this little guy. I mean, he's not little. He's a twin-engine medium bomber, but, you know. Armor plating, mostly just around just to protect the gunners. It's basically the same as the other HE-111. Uh, fuel tanks are still there. It's probably the biggest downfall of this thing, as to most bombers, is their fuel tanks and the wings. But you can take out a decent chunk of health of the bases. I don't know if these can one-shot bases, but... You, you can hit them pretty dang hard. At least in arcade. You can hit them pretty hard. Not to mention torpedoes. Those are always fun. Then, moving on down to the last row here. We get more BF-109s. The F variants... Kinda... With the BF-109E line... You can kinda see how they're a little... Blocky clunky here, like they're, there's a lot of, I don't know, it's not like smooth or anything, like you got, you know, it's, it's an early variant BF-109, you can, you, you can tell. That doesn't make them bad though, but the BF-109Fs start to get closer to what a BF-109 looks like. And what a BF-109 looks like is a big old cannon in the nose. That's a 20 millimeter cannon smack in the nose. Now, if you guys remember when I talk about gun convergence, with the cannons and the wings, they need to meet at a certain point. Well, with a 20 millimeter cannon right there, it's basically just point where you want to shoot. Granted, you only get one of them, and you only get 60 rounds, but don't let that deter you. This is still a great plane. But, as before, when I was talking about the other BF-109s, really, just boom and zoom. Just, just boom and zoom in this thing. I don't know if this is the one that gets it. I mean, this one does have a, I guess you could say, a ordnance loadout. You can get 450s, or the 250, if you want, but... I don't understand. I, I I don't understand why people would ground attack in this thing. This thing has an amazing climb rate and amazing speed. Go at. I would say this is the best BF109 if you want to play as a interceptor. Uh, if you want to go after other enemy planes, I would say uh, fighters, not bombers, just because you only do have 60 rounds in that cannon. So unless you're pretty accurate. You are going to have to spray with the machine guns a little bit. But if you're if you're going up there just to take down other fighters, I would say this is a good plane for it. Uh, armor plating, you just get the little armor plated chair there. And most like the other BF-109s, everything's just kind of folded up together, so they can be fairly tanky. But with this thing, just kind of a generalization, climb and just boom and zoom. The F2 variant changes up things a little bit. You no longer have the 20 millimeter cannon, but now you have like a 15 millimeter cannon. And also, I mean, granted, you get 200 rounds with it, but it's it's not a 20 millimeter cannon. It's not going to deal that much damage. Just basically treat it as a 50 cal machine gun. That's how I kind of treat it, basically. But Kind of the same thing as before. Very fast. Very good climb rate. The only thing that differs the uh, F2 from the F1 is the addition of these uh, RZ-65 rockets that are actually hanging off the wing there. Now, they're not very powerful rockets, but, I mean, they're there if you want to get after some bomber kills with some rockets, but they do add a good amount of drag to the plane. 
Yeah, you lose 26.8 miles per hour. But I usually just stick with the machine guns just because I've, rockets for me are kind of unreliable if you want to go after kills or bomber kills with them. You have to get a little too close, not to mention I don't think those rockets aren't really that great. But basically this is a BF-109 that has a slightly larger 50 cal instead of a cannon. Then we move on to the BF-109A, sorry BF-109, FW-190A4. Just a direct down, there's nothing in between them. The A4. Have you noticed it yet? I'll, I'll, I'll give you a second. There is a lot to notice, so I'll point it out for you. 4.3 battle ranking at rank 2. You go after after the HE-100, the little speed demon with a few little machine guns. Butcher Bird, better Butcher Bird. Four 20mm cannons. Right here. Right here. Right here. And right here. You also get, just for shits and giggles, two of the 792 machine guns. But you don't care about those. Four 20mm cannons at rank two. This thing... I'm going to keep it short. Everything that the BF-109A1 has, but better. You also get, I believe, the additional armor plating here. And this one here to protect the pilot from underneath and a little bit more behind. And something to protect the bottom of the engine. But... As a new player, as you're going down the tech tree, I keep clicking on that, I'm, I apologize, you really need to be careful. Because you go from 1.7 with biplanes, 3.7 to facing off against P-51 Mustangs, and then 4.3 facing off against the upgraded versions of those P-51 Mustangs. I would recommend going down this line first. Just to kind of give you a taste of what German energy fighting is like. Because these planes, even though they're they're de they're energy fighters, you they can still bail you out in a turn every now and again. These things here, they're not super unmaneuverable, but... They, they just have... Uh, this is not a very new new pilot friendly plane just I would say build up your experience more before taking these things out because these planes are absolutely devastating which means you are going to face planes that are also absolutely devastating and I don't want to see a new pilot hop into one of these things not knowing he just jumped into a battle wrecking 4.3 aircraft and next thing you know his BF-110, his HE-112s are facing off against later tier Spitfires. P late, late war P-51 Mustangs. Just be careful. Then we move on to the JU-87Gs. You get two of them here. They're basically the same thing, and it's kind of a continuation of the D5. But instead, the Germans decided that 20mm cannons weren't big enough. 
Yeah. You get dual mounted. One in each wing. 37 millimeter cannons. With high explosive and high velocity armor piercing. You can go after tanks. You can go after planes. Basically, you are... You just have two massive cannons. <laughs> you know, same armor plating, same fuel tanks. It's still the JU-87s. It's just... Now you have 37mm cannons. And you get two of them. So, have fun. The downside to these, though, is that once your cannons run out of ammo, that's it. Y you have to wait for these things to reload. There is no other forward-facing armament. Oh, sorry about that. But GU-87s with 37mm cannons, that's just what they are. Just... Yeah. They're <laughs> so, moving on here to the last plane for Germany, at least in... I'll talk about the premiums in a little bit. The FW-200C1, which is... The first, and I think only four-engine heavy bomber for the Germans. Now, it has a great bomb loadout. Don't get me wrong. You get 2,000 kilogram bombs and two 500s. But there is a glaring weakness to the Condor. This is what it's called, by the way is it's just lack of defensive armament. You get a gun here that kind of... This guy's going to be doing most of the work in this plane. You get a guy down here, but they're only one guns, and they're only 7.92mm machine guns. You also get a guy up front here, which is basically useless. And then you guy up top here that's basically useless. In my experience, these two guys are the ones that are going to be uh, targeted the most and use the most useful. It's just their guns are so small and they only get one of them. The other big glaring weakness to this plane is it's just it just dies so easily. Look at that! Fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel tank, fuel tank. There's just so many fuel tanks in there. It's just unfortunate that such a large, beautiful aircraft as the Condor gets killed so easily. So... What I would recommend to staying alive in the Condor is side climb. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while, especially with that top bomb loadout. It's going to take a bit, but climb up as high as you can before you go start targeting bases. It sucks, because this thing looks like a modern plane. I mean, look at the nose. It's a beautiful aircraft. It just... It has no way of defending itself. And... It has a massive... Just... Bomb waiting to go off. 150 cal in the right place will send this plane... Back down to Earth faster than... Anything I've seen so far. But don't let that discourage you. This plane is a lot of fun if and when you get to the bombing targets. So, I'm going to kind of skip these three here just because the IL-2, it's a Russian plane. 
I'll review it when I get to the Russians. Same with the Yak-1B. It's a Russian fighter. Yeah, I know I have it, and I enjoy flying it, but I would just say I'm going to wait on these, and I'm also going to wait on the Wellington Mark 1C. Just because this is a British plane, it's a captured uh, British plane that's now flying for the Germans. I'll get to these when I get to the, their respective countries. So when I talk about German premiums at Tier 2, I mainly talk about this, which... This thing is massive. I think this is the largest plane in the game. Now, I'm not going to talk about it a lot because I don't have it and I'm not that big of a bomber pilot, but I'll just I'll just I'll just talk to you about the defensive armament. 20 mm cannon, 20 mm cannon and a dual turret. Four 50 cal machine guns. 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 You remember how I said the Condor, the FW200, had problems with its defensive armament? This thing doesn't. In fact, I am actually very scared. I will full on admit it. I am terrified whenever I have to go shoot down a Blumen Voss. <laughs> Just kind of show you how big this thing is. That's the one piece of armor plating it has. And that's the, the pilot's chair. You do have massive fuel tanks here in the wings. But you really shouldn't need to worry about getting shot at all that much. Because if anybody is dumb enough to sit behind you for very long. 4, 8, 12, 16 guns facing at him. I'm just gonna show the... Just, yeah, it's so big it gets its own map to spawn on. Uh, the only problem with these guns is that since they are located so far out, they are subject to gun convergence. So, you can kill them from behind with the guns firing at you if you're outside of that convergence and he's controlling his uh, guns himself the pilot because if you look you see where all the guns meet right there anybody outside of that is gonna be able to shoot at you and really only the one in the middle there is gonna be able to hit you but if they're inside that convergence and just goes to show you how much coverage these things have. My biggest suggestion, if you want to kill these things, go at it from the front, because it only has the four machine guns here. You do, do watch out for the 20mm cannon there, but basically this thing has a very nice cone of fire, so I would say directly below it. So I would attack from above straight down on this thing. And I would suggest either having a lot of heavy caliber machine guns, like 50 cals, or a massive cannon, like a 37 millimeter cannon, to just blow this thing up, because you do not want to stay in this thing's guns for very long. In terms of bombs, it gets 20 of the 250 kilogram bombs, which the bombs themselves aren't that great, but with that many bombs, bye-bye bases. Yeah. It, it, it doesn't get any bomb upgrades, but 20 250 kilogram bombs is plenty to take out a lot, if not all, of your bases. This thing makes people want to change their pants. 
So, something to complement your FW190A1 and your JU87D. <laughs> so, yeah, that's the Germans at rank 2. A lot of nasty things. Some pretty nice bomber. A, a very nice, very, very nice bomber, but sadly not that great in terms of actually living. Some pretty fun ground attack aircraft and some absolutely devastating fighters. Plus a bomber that just makes you crap your pants every time you see one coming towards you. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments or whatever you want to do. Anyway, guys, have a great day.